the pediatric GI system. Uh, pediatric differences of the GI tract, they have smaller stomachs. Uh, absorption and excretion do not begin until after birth because in utero the placenta provides the nutrients and removes the waste so the GI tract really isn't functioning in utero. The GI system is immature at birth. The smaller stomachs in infants, um, they do have smaller stomachs but motility is greater so newborns need smaller more frequent meals than adults do. It's also the reason that um, infant's stool is more frequent and has a more liquid consistency than adults. The infant's cardiac sphincter is more relaxed, so they regurgitate small amounts of what they eat frequently. Stomach capacity um, of different age groups. So at 30 days old, an infant can hold about 90 mLs in their stomach. A one-year-old, about 360 mLs. A two-year-old, about 500 mLs, and an adult, two to three liters. Enzymes are deficient um, in infants. They're not present in enough quantity until about four to six months of age, and that's why gas is so common in young infants. Infants' livers are immature. After the first few weeks of life, the liver is able to conjugate bilirubin and excrete bile. This is why newborns will have an increase in their bilirubin level. By the second year of life, uh, digestive processes should be complete. Age-related considerations. Teeth. Infants should have about six to eight teeth by one year of age. Children and adolescents should have white, smooth teeth, and about 20 baby teeth are replaced with 32 permanent teeth. The gums should be tied against the teeth in pink. Infants can taste. We talked about their stomach being small at birth and their liver being immature at birth and their intestine having greater motility in the infant stage and that it's deficient in the um, enzymes amylase, lipase, and trypsin. Dehydration. It can be caused by many different things. We're just talking about it in relation to the GI system because it's um, a common um, result from diet, nausea and diarrhea in young kids. It can be caused from GI illnesses, bacterial or viral infections, GU complications. So if the kidneys um, are peeing too much, then they can become dehydrated. Endocrine problems such as diabetes, DKA, um, Burns, so if the child becomes burned, they can become dehydrated very quickly. Um, so it can be caused by many, many different things. It occurs when there's an excessive loss of body water, so output is greater than the input. And the types of dehydration, so whether it's isotonic, hypertonic, or hypotonic, is how it affects the extracellular fluid. So if it's isotonic, it's talking about the extracellular fluid. If it's hypertonic, it's talking about extracellular fluid. If it's hypotonic, it's extracellular fluid. So isotonic dehydration is when the extracellular fluid is left, um, or I'm sorry, is when water and sodium loss is equal in amounts. The child's at risk for hypovolemic shock. And this to replace this, we would give um, isotonic fluid like normal saline. Now, anytime we give IV fluids, that's considered a, a, um, a treatment for severe dehydration. We'll talk about treatment for mild and moderate here in just a second. Hypertonic uh, dehydration, so extracellular fluid is left with excess sodium because the water loss is greater than sodium causing the shift from intracellular to extracellular. So the water moves out of the cells and shrinks the cells. So an example of this would be um, dehydration with DKA. For the severe hypertonic dehydrated patient, we could give a hypotonic solution such as half normal saline, and this would allow the water to shift back into the cell. Hypotonic dehydration, so extracellular fluid is left with the excess fluid, so there's less sodium in the extracellular space. 
because the electrolyte loss is greater than the water loss. So water moves from extracellular fluid to intracellular fluid. So water moves into the cell and swells it. We will see hyponatremia. And we would give, in severe hypotonic dehydration, we would give a hypertonic solution, such as D5 half normal saline. So whatever type of dehydration you have, you give the opposite fluid. Unless it's isotonic, then you would give isotonic fluid. But in hypertonic dehydration, we give a hypotonic solution. In hypotonic dehydration, we give a hypertonic solution. You really want to watch closely for overhydration, especially in kiddos. So excessive uh, body fluid intake can lead to heart failure very quickly. In severe dehydration, uh, most kiddos are going to get IV replacement like we just talked about. A fluid bolus of 20 mLs per kilogram over about a 20-minute period to quickly replace that fluid. Signs and symptoms of dehydration. Um, in mild dehydration, it may cause few or maybe no signs at all. Severe dehydration may make the child very ill. They may have dry mouth. They may not want to drink any fluids. They may be tired, restless, or fussy. Very sleepy. They may not be wanting to wake up. They'll have sunken eyes. They may cry without tears. They may be urinating very little or not at all and have a dark, concentrated urine. They may be cold, have pale feet and hands, and sunken fontanelles. So we talked about IV replacement with severe dehydration. If it's mild or moderate dehydration, oral rehydration solution is preferred. It's a drink that contains specific amounts of salt, sugar, and minerals. And it is the best oral liquid for replacing body fluid loss and mild and moderate dehydration. So I know most of you all have heard of over-the-counter solutions, oral replacement solutions such as Pedialyte. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about oral replacement solutions. It can be given in small amounts, um, about a teaspoon at a time if the child is vomiting. Um, so you're given smaller amounts more frequently um, if they can't hold it down. If the child vomits it back up, wait 30 minutes and try it again. Ask the provider how much oral replacement solution the child needs and how often you should give it. Make sure parents know that a sports drink is not the same as an oral replacement so, oral rehydration solution. Um, sports drinks should not be given without a provider's um, recommendation. Do not give the child soft drinks or fruit juices because it can make the condition worse. Oral rehydration solutions for mild to moderate dehydration. Um, usually um, you want to give a certain amount over a four-hour period to replace the losses the child's already had. Then you will replace continuing losses based upon if it corrects the problem or not. And then also maintain um, the required fluid requirements that they have on top of whatever's causing them to be dehydrated. So for example, for mild dehydration, uh, to replace the loss over four hours, you would give about 50 mLs per kilogram of oral rehydration, rehydration solution over four hours. For moderate dehydration, give about 100 mLs per kilogram over about four hours. If the child continues to have diarrhea, you could give about 10 mLs per kilogram for each stool to replace that continuing loss um, that they're having. If the child won't drink it, they could um, use um, things such as unsweetened Kool-Aid powder to make it taste better. For older children, uh, make sure um, parents know that popsicles are liquids. So if they can't get the child to drink, they could um, offer something fun like popsicles. Again, in severe dehydration, um, we're talking IV fluid replacement, um, maybe NG tubes, um, but with mild to moderate oral rehydration solutions. Um, again, we talked about assessment findings of um, dehydration, um, and they're listed here. I'll let you look at those. A picture. Uh, 
Um, so how do we classify mild, moderate, um, and severe dehydration? Go back to the assessment slide here. Um, mild, um, it's all um, categories by the weight loss of the child. So mild dehydration is if the infant or young child has lost 3 to 5% of their body weight. You'll see capillary refill greater than 2 seconds and maybe a slight thirst, but they could be asymptomatic. Moderate dehydration is classified as weight loss in between 6 and 9% you'll start to see more symptoms such as a capillary refill greater than two seconds, irritability, um, tachycardia, dry mucous membranes, decreased tears and skin turgor, tachypnea, and this is where your sunken fontanelles could start. Severe dehydration is categorized as a weight loss of greater than 10%. You'll have the same signs and symptoms that we just mentioned for moderate dehydration, but you'll have a longer capillary refill. Now we're talking greater than four seconds. Hypotension, so you'll start to see signs and symptoms of hypovolemic shock. Tinted skin. And again, severe dehydration is when we uh, are thinking IV fluid replacement. Sunken eyeballs are with severe dehydration and oliguria or no urine output whatsoever.